are the quiz answers on electromagnetic induction? A coil lies flat on a level top in a region where the magnetic field vector points straight up. The magnetic field suddenly grows stronger. Okay, that's, that's an important word there. The magnetic field is trying to increase. When viewed from above, what is the direction of the induced current in this coil as the field increases? Now, if the magnetic field is growing stronger, the induced current, remember, would all, always be in such a direction as to oppose what produces it. In this case, it is the increasing magnetic field that is producing it. Therefore, the magnetic field produced by the induced current would be against this magnetic field. So that's the magnetic field that's already there. The magnetic field is pointing straight up. And therefore, the induced current must produce a field that is opposite to that, which would be given by the green arrow here. Now, for that to happen, by the right-hand rule, the current has to be flowing in a clockwise direction, as you can see, given by the right-hand rule where the closed fingers show the direction of the current and the thumb gives the direction of the field. Therefore, the answer is clockwise. The current is flowing clockwise. The inductive reactance in an AC circuit changes by what factor when the frequency is tripled? Inductive reactance, XL, is given by 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance. Therefore, if the frequency is tripled, then the inductive reactance is also going to be tripled. As the frequency of the AC voltage across a capacitor approaches zero, the capacitive reactance of that capacitor all right, the capacitive reactance Xc is given by 1 by 2 pi F times C. Now, when C tends to 0, Xc tends to infinity. So, Xc approaches infinity. Consider an RLC circuit. The impedance of the circuit increases if Xl increases. When is the statement true? Impedance of an RLC circuit is given by R squared plus XL minus XC whole squared. Oh, and I'm, I have to put a square root of that quantity. Square root of that. And if XL is greater than or equal to XC, then we know that Z is going to increase. But if XC is greater than or equal to, let's say XC is greater than XL, then it's going to decrease. It's just a little bit of math there. In a transformer, the power input is equal to the power output. Now, of course, that is true only in the case of an ideal transformer. Uh, the power in the primary is equal to the power in the secondary. And electrical power is given by the product of current and voltage. Therefore, IP times VP is equal to IS times VS. A circular coil lies flat on a horizontal table. A bar magnet is held above its center. That's important. The bar magnet is just held there. That means the magnetic field is not changing. And again, the second sentence says the stationary magnet. 
because the magnet is not moving, the magnetic field associated with the circular coil is not changing. And therefore, the induced current is zero. No current is induced in the coil. The important thing to remember is that electromagnetic induction takes place only when the magnetic field changes. The word change is important because by Faraday's law you have E is equal to minus d phi by dt. Phi is the magnetic field and if there is no change in flux d phi is zero. A resistor and an inductor are connected in series to an ideal battery of constant terminal voltage. At the moment contact is made with the battery, the voltage across the resistor is. This means you are just closing the circuit. And right when you close the circuit, the current flowing is zero. There's no current. That's the resistance, that's the inductance. You just close the switch here. At that moment, there is no current. I is equal to zero. A circular loop of wire is rotated at constant angular speed about an axis whose direction can be varied. In a region where a uniform magnetic field points straight down, so the magnetic field is pointing straight down, what must be the orientation of the loop's axis of rotation if the induced EMF is to be a maximum? Okay, now if that is the loop and this is the magnetic field, and the induced DMF is given by the formula NAB omega sine omega t and uh, E becomes maximum when sine omega t is 1 where omega t is 90 degree. Ooh, that was that happens when omega t is 90 I must say when omega t is 90 degrees now remember that um, the angle between the magnetic field and the perpendicular drawn to the coil has to be 90 so it's not actually the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil but rather the angle between the magnetic field and the perpendicular drawn to the plane of the coil. Therefore, the coil has to be rotating about an axis that is horizontal. Let's see if I can give you a better idea by drawing it like this. Okay, so if we had this and if the axis was like that now you know if the magnetic field was down as given the angle between this perpendicular drawn to the coil and the magnetic field is 90 and so the coil is spinning about this way and the axis is horizontal I hope that makes sense According to Lenz's law, the direction of an induced current in a conductor will be that which tends to produce which of the following effects. Yes, the induced current should always be such a way as to oppose the effect that produces it. That is why you have the negative sign here to show that the induced DMF opposes the change in magnetic flux. This is uh, repeated, the inductive reactance in an AC circuit changes by what factor when the frequency is tripled? If it is tripled, the inductive reactance also is tripled. We talked about this earlier. This is a repeated question. Okay. 
And if the inductance and the capacitance both double in an LRC series circuit, what happens to the resonant frequency? The resonant frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi square root L times C. If both of them are doubled, you get F prime, which is 1 by 2 pi square root. So now you have 2L times 2C. And when you take the square, see you have 4 inside. When you take the square root of 4, you're going to get 2 outside. Which means this is F by 2. So F prime is F by 2. So it decreases to 1 half of its original value. A transformer is a device used to increase or decrease an AC voltage. Remember, a transformer does not work with DC. So C cannot be correct, it's B. And it's, uh, this is the formula. Voltage in the secondary divided by voltage in the primary is equal to number of turns in the secondary divided by number of turns in the primary. As a coil is removed from a magnetic field, an EMF is induced in the coil, causing a current to flow within the coil. Remember, it's being removed. This current interacts with the magnetic field, producing a force which, remember, it should always oppose. So therefore, it acts in a direction opposite to the coil's motion. That is Lenz's law. A series RL circuit with inductance and resistance is connected to an EMF. After a period of time, the current reaches a final value of 2 amperes. And there is a second series circuit that is identical except that the inductance is twice as before. And when it is connected to the same EMF, what will be the final value of the current? It will be the same because the maximum current depends only on the resistance. The maximum current in the circuit is given by V by R, Ohm's law. And it does not depend on the inductance. It's independent of the inductance. What does the inductance do? It just delays the current reaching a maximum. So the rate at which the current grows depends on the inductance. Yes. But the maximum value itself, when it gets there, does not depend on the inductance. So I'm saying I is a function of time, but the final value is I max and it's independent of the inductance. So I hope you study these questions and good luck.